Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Bash Brothers Fishing. Naeem here, and today this is gonna be part two of how to plan out your John Boat build. If you missed part one, I did a part one that went over just general planning, how to think through the project, what things should you consider when trying to figure out, one, do you wanna do the bill? Two, can you even afford to do the bill? Because it does come with a cost even though it's a DIY project. So if you missed that video, link at the top of the screen, check that out right there. So for part two, I'm covering tools needed to do this build. And I'm gonna do this from two aspects. One will be the basics. I wanna be able to provide you guys, what do you need minimally to do a John Bolt build? And two, I'll also include some more intermediate tools. But the main purpose of this video will be just to give you the basics. And I wanna make this as comprehensive as possible but it won't be a complete list. Everyone has different preferences on what tools they use to get the job done. So when doing your own boat project like this, you wanna consider a couple of things. How much do materials cost and what tools do I need and what cost comes into play, all right? I won't know all the exact prices, but I'll give you some ballpark figures here and there. I'll do my best to put as many links in the description below to the products that I'm showing here in this video. So some of the stuff that I'm not gonna go over are basic tools like screwdrivers, pliers, you know, things that hopefully you already have laying around your garage that will come into play in any type of project you go through. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about may surprise you. No, it's not a saw, it's not a drill. It's a shop vac and you should not, and I'm telling you guys, do not do a John Boat project without one of these right here, all right? This is critical. You're gonna create such a mess from aluminum shavings, wood shavings, rivets all over the place. I mean, you name it, you're gonna need this right here. So before you get started, get yourself a shop vac. This is a small one, so don't get an industrial size one. This is an eight amp one. I got it from Harbor Freight. It's small, five gallons and works perfectly. I have no issues. This thing is very strong. I think I picked it up for like 40 bucks, something like that. And it might even be cheaper on sale. Next, get yourself some clamps. Now these are your helpers. Unless you have someone else that's gonna be with you every day building this thing out, you're going to need these. These are critical. These are your extra pair of hands, your extra person and you basically use it to hold together things that you're gonna rivet. I mean, you name it. This thing comes in handy in so many different ways, whether you're sawing something, hammering something. Got these also from Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive, but you're gonna need this for sure, especially if you're doing a build by yourself. All right, next we're gonna go into tools to cut aluminum or cut wood. All of the framing I do is typically aluminum. Some of these things can be used on wood, but this is geared more towards cutting aluminum. When I first started out, I started with an angle grinder with a cut wheel on it. And this does work. Two things I don't like about it. One, it's a little bit slower than using other saws. And two, which was the deal breaker for me is when you're cutting aluminum with an angle grinder, it gives off a lot of aluminum dust and that stuff is toxic. You do not want that in your lungs. And I remember the first time I used it, I didn't have any kind of mask on my face and I just kind of felt horrible that night and scared the crap out of me. This does come in handy for cutting certain things that you can't get a saw in a, maybe a tight space. If you're gonna go this route, which you can, wear a respirator, wear some kind of mask to filter the air you're breathing for sure. So this is an option. The good thing about this also is it's versatile because you can change out these discs for different applications. So it's one tool that can serve many purposes. But I moved away from cutting aluminum using this for sure. And I went to a jigsaw. And when I went to the jigsaw, I was very happy. The cuts are much more cleaner than the angle grinder and it's faster. You'll need to buy some blades, of course, cause you're gonna go through them depending on how much you're cutting, but definitely plus you get much cleaner cuts, it's faster and there's no aluminum dust that you're breathing in. You just have shavings that you'll need to back in with your shop vac. And this gets the job really well. I actually built my first boat primarily with this one jigsaw right here. I cut everything from aluminum sheeting as well as all the aluminum angle that I needed to build my boat. So this is just a regular jigsaw. I am not promoting products and you know, I'm gonna actually try my best not to show labels cause this is not what it's about. As I go through this, you'll see I have a variety of different brands. I just get what I feel I need at the time and who has what for what price, I get it. You know, make sure it's good stuff. This is fairly inexpensive. I believe this was under a hundred bucks. Just picked it up from Home Depot. Awesome tool right here. So this is what I will call the basic saw to cut. 
and get the job done. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more advanced, I highly recommend this right here, which is a bandsaw. The first person I saw, I believe that I saw use this, and I'm pretty sure of it was Michael Lopez, Tiny Built Nation, use this exact one right here. This is the mini, they have different versions, but the mini works out well. You can fit all the angle you need right here. I think up to like two inches for this, but typically we use an inch and a half. It really gets the job done. And one of the benefits I really like about this is this quick. I don't have to get a saw. I don't have to clamp anything down and I can grab my aluminum. I'm gonna pretend this is aluminum, stick it right in here. That's a bad angle. And I can cut both sides of the angle at one time. With the jigsaw, I did have to adjust aluminum to cut both sides of the aluminum, but this gets it done in one swoop. Very handy and very poor portable, lightweight. Again, this is more advanced. You don't need this, all right? Having it, definite plus. Also, you can go with a reciprocating saw, and this is more technique specific. This is not something you would use a whole lot, at least not for me. Of course, everything in this video is my opinion, but this is a lifesaver depending on the application. So consider getting a reciprocating saw. I've used this to cut my bench, and it's really good if you need to get a certain angle and make certain type of cuts that you can't get a jigsaw in, or, and definitely not this. This is primarily for angle. This comes in really handy. Again, this is not necessary, but good to have if you need it. The last thing I've used to cut aluminum will be a miter saw. And I'm, I don't have it here behind me, but I'll probably show you some clips of me cutting some right now, which I really like using, especially when I have a lot to do. And I know I'll be doing a lot of cutting that day. I'll just set up my table, get my miter saw out, and it cuts very quickly and cuts very clean. Doesn't require a lot of effort gets the job done as well. Again, not what you need, not part of the basic tool list, but just letting you know that's another option as well. Also with cutting, I wanna throw this in there. It's fairly inexpensive. It makes life a lot easier. It can cut through 1 16th aluminum. Just a little hand snipper right here. I've cut sheeting. I've cut some angle as well. Sometimes you need to make some precision cuts to fit specific areas in your boat. This is a lifesaver right here as well. So I'll kind of just throw this in there, pick this up from Home Depot and works like a charm for cutting sheet, cutting some angle, but up to 1 16th. If you're doing 1 8th, uh, don't, that's not gonna work. All right, next we're gonna get into drilling. With doing wood and especially aluminum framing, you're gonna do a million holes. I don't have a special drill. This is actually one that I've had for over 20 years. This drill is very old and I did my entire first John boat build, my personal boat with this drill right here. You can also spruce it up if you want and get an impact drill. This will allow you to get into tighter, smaller places. In addition to getting into tight spaces, it's lightweight, grab and go. You drop in your hex drill bits right in there and here's a little set I bought. Just has some different sizes and pop them in and out and get going. But again, all you really need is one and this is to just get the job done. It can be any brand. I've got DeWalt, I've got Ryobi. I mean, I just go with whatever I need at the time, but make sure it's a reliable drill. Um, I would go with one that will last. I mean, you're gonna be using it over and over and over again. In addition, get yourself some extra batteries. Have at least two batteries that way when one dies, production can keep going, pop another battery in and you're good to go. All right, next up we have the rivet gun. So if you're doing aluminum framing, rivets, 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 you probably put a thousand rivets in your boat. So you're gonna need a rivet gun. Basic rivet gun right here. I got this from Harbor Freight as well. And the funny thing is, is it still works. And a lot of people think it won't work long. Harbor Freight, cheap stuff, depending on what you buy. So pretty inexpensive, very basic rivet gun right here. And this is a long shaft one. I have another one right here that's a short one. I got this one from Home Depot. Funny thing is this one costs more and it's not working. But <laughs> this one from Harbor Freight is absolutely awesome. Long neck so it fits into places. I can't get that short stubby one in. And this right here, I built my first boat with this Harbor Freight rivet gun, very cheap. I think it was like, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks. Don't quote me, but you'll need this basic rivet gun. And then if you wanna step up and get the mother of all rivet guns, get this one right here. This is an electric 
portable rivet gun. One thing I love about this is it's electric. I can bang in rivets very quickly. The wear and tear on my arm is not there versus doing a manual riveter. The downside is this thing is pretty expensive. If you're only doing one John Bolt build, you're just doing this for yourself, do not buy this. Go with the regular rivet gun, you will get the job done and you'll be happy. If you're building out multiple bolts, if this is a repeat thing for you, you may wanna consider investing in this. In the long run, it'll save you a lot of muscle ache and it'll make your job go by a lot faster. But I have absolutely no regrets buying this rivet gun right there. Love it. All right, so lastly, we wanna get into electrical. So if your project includes doing electrical work, whether you're running LED lights for nav lights, deck lights, hatch lights, hopefully you're installing a bilge pump in your boat. One thing for sure you'll need is a heat gun. This is for heating up your shrink tubing as well as any uh, self-shrinking butt connectors that you'll be using. I highly recommend getting a heat gun. I got this one from Harbor Freight. I was actually on my boat, I used one that's like 20 years old again, one that I had that I bought. I didn't even know why I bought it because I wasn't doing anything with it, but I had it laying around and built my entire boat with an old one. I think it was by Wagner. This one is Harbor Freight. I actually just picked this one up and it's pretty good. I've gone through a couple of different ones and actually returned them if it wasn't a pull trigger one or just wasn't a good heat gun, didn't heat up fast enough for me. But this one's working out pretty good for me so far. I've done a few little projects with it and I highly recommend getting a heat gun. You can heat up shrink tubing using a lighter, not efficient. To me, it doesn't even spread the heat evenly. So doing a John Bolt build and doing electrical work, go ahead and get yourself a heat gun. It doesn't have to be a lot of money to get it. I do recommend getting a wired one. I've tried a couple cordless ones, but it just doesn't heat up as well as some good old electricity. So get yourself a heat gun. Another thing that'll be really handy for you is some fish tape. Got this from Home Depot and this works like a charm. I think this was like 20, 25 bucks maybe. It's 25 feet long. This helps you and save you a lot of headache when you're trying to get wires through your conduit. When you're trying to get wires through small places in your boat, go ahead and get yourself some fish tape. Comes right out, connect your wire to this and then fish your wire through wherever you're trying to get it to. Now again, I'm talking about tools, of course with electrical work, there's a lot of things you need to buy to get it done, not just wires, but butt connectors, terminals, I mean the whole nine yards, but that's not covered in this video. To get a good feel for the supplies you'll need to do electrical work in your boat project, check out the link at the top of the screen to one of our electric wiring videos where you'll be able to see a lot more. A couple other basic tools you need for electric work are wire cutters, uh, wire strippers, or you can just pick up this one tool right here this is very inexpensive. I might even have bought this from Radio Shack for those of you who are old enough to know what Radio Shack is. This has all three. You've got your cutters, you've got your crimpers, and your strip wire strippers down bottom right here. Very inexpensive, but you have to have either a three-in-one or individual tools to get electrical wiring done. All right, so next I wanna just go into some general things you'll need, no specific order. You know, let's start with personal care, right? And I I took this for granted when I first started and I paid for it. I mean, you bleed on these projects if you're not protecting yourself. One, get yourself some good gloves. I use these to build two boat projects and I've saved my skin literally multiple times. I even have holes in them where the drill bit caught the glove and not my skin. Wear some gloves. Also get some eyewear. I've had aluminum shaving fly in my eye and that's the worst feeling on earth. Wear some protective goggles, protect your ears. Maybe you're cutting or uh, using an angle grinder. That stuff gets really loud. Protect your hearing. Just get some of these right here. You will need a tape measure. Man, this is your best friend. You're gonna be measuring, measuring, remeasuring, measuring a million times over. Make sure you have a tape measure. Just some different things, guys. A leveler, you'll need to level your boat, level your trailer from the beginning to make sure that everything you're doing from there is level. So get one of these. This is a small one. I'm sure you guys have seen this around town, but pick that up. Talk about measuring. I have things, miscellaneous things like a yardstick, and I have this yardstick as well, which has a leveler built into it. Um, this is not exactly necessary, but has come in very handy. You also want to get a speed square, and this is not like a miscellaneous item right here. 
This is very important. You will need one of these. You don't have to get a huge one. I actually have two. This is a bigger one. I actually use this one the most, but this came in handy in, in times where I needed just a little bigger measurement. This right here, bread and butter, pick up a speed square. Even if you don't know what you're gonna use it for, trust me, you'll, you'll figure it out as you do your project. Lastly, um, not necessarily a must have thing, but this right here has come in very handy, a framing square. And I've used this when, especially when laying hydro turf. Now that gets more project specific. I'm trying to keep it general today, but this is an option as well, depending on what you're doing. Just some things to keep in mind as you're trying to figure out what tools you need. That's not needed, okay? That's not a must have item right there. Of course, you're gonna need drill bits. And the most common size you'll probably need is a 1 8 drill bit. I think that's what this is. No, this is 3 16 Here's a 1 8 This is one that I get a lot of. I tend to go with black oxide drill bits, but I sometimes will use a titanium drill bit as well, depending on what I'm doing. But nine times out of 10, black oxide gets it done. Um, I just like the ones from DeWalt right here. Two sizes I typically go with, 1 8 3 16 I might go with 5 16 for certain applications, but make sure you have extra drill bits. To do a John Bolt build, you might wanna just buy like four, six, somewhere around maybe a half dozen drill bits. These are actually very inexpensive. They're only a few bucks at Lowe's and you get two in a pack for this one, the 1 8 There are other tools that I have here that I won't really cover today, but just to kind of throw it out there, may come in handy, but not a necessity. Uh, you know, orbital sander, you know, this is a must for certain projects. Again, if you're just putting together a jumbo, so you're gonna frame it out and build a deck, you may not necessarily need a sander. Oh, almost forgot. You will need something like this. This is a metal filer, all right? As you're cutting aluminum angle or any type of aluminum, the edges can get rough. You wanna clean off those rough edges and this is a perfect little tool right here. This little metal filer, pick it up at any hardware store. I use this more than this to do a jumbo. Now this comes in very handy when you're painting or just in a situation where you need to do a lot of sanding. An orbital, orbital sander like this comes in handy. Again, this is not on the must have list, but at some point you may have to get one of these right here. You know, I've got my portable light, I've got routers, I've got other planing tools right here, but not necessarily needed to do a John Bolt build. Again, I'll link as much as I can in the description below. Also have links to TB Nation where you can get 5% off your order using the Bash Brothers code BBF5. Also check out our affiliate link to Amped Outdoors for lithium batteries and a lot of other boat and fishing products. Now the great thing about the conversion playlist I put together on the channel in the description below is you'll be able to see all this stuff in action. You know, it won't be just me sit sitting here saying, hey, you need this, you need that. You can actually watch that and see end to end how these tools play out. Where do you need them? What did I use them for? How well did they work? So now that we've done the planning phase of a John Bolt build, we're gonna get into the actual build and that's what's coming up. You guys know I have a brand new project going on. It's the Low 1436 Aluminum John Bolt build. The build is turning out to be epic. Can't wait to share it with you guys. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell. Be a part of yet another epic journey on this channel. Now, if you wanna see a full conversion in action using the exact tools in this video, click this link right up here to see the conversion of my low 1448. And you can also click this link right down there to see the conversion job I did on a Lumacraft 1232. With that being said, we've done all the planning. Let's get to building this boat out. We'll see you on the next video.